Buddy Arinko, I'm afraid your time has come at last. Diving into another mind this early? Why, Doctor, you should have given me some warning. I would have packed a swimsuit. That I won't be necessary. I found a way to manage the end of this process without you. Uh, what? Without me? <laughs> there must be some mistake. Assistant, kill her. That's that's a bit sudden, isn't it? Uh, miasma, dear, however will you be able to gloat if I'm dead? I don't need to gloat, Buddy Arinko. I just need to win. Well, if that's how you want to be, I can't imagine it'll be very satisfying to just do away with- Assistant, I've had enough of this. Kill her or give the gun to me and I'll do it. That's more like it. Clean up when you're done. <clears throat> that was cold. Killing the two of them so fast. I don't think talking back would have helped rescue you. I pulled off the mask I'd stolen from one of the assistants and finally saw her unobstructed. Buddy Arinko looking at me like I was her knight in stolen armor. I didn't want to admit it, but I missed that smug little grin on her face. Probably a lot more than I realized. I'd been gone about a week. Six days spent recovering and planning this escape with Sukuliak. She looked more than a little worse for wear. Maybe just as awful as she did in my nightmares. They'd been haunting me since I'd left. But I hoped that this plan I had come up with would be the end of them, once and for all. Every healed blister and scar on me wanted to cut open just to make up for all that lost time. But I tried not to let that show. Hopefully, it didn't. Hey, if you want to swoon and fall into someone's arms, mine are pretty empty at the moment. Don't go and get a fat head about it now. Uh, my head is the perfect size, and we both know it. Her death doesn't necessarily mean we're out of the woods just yet. We can't afford a single surprise before we find that weapon. The, uh, right, the weapon. Uh, we gotta... We have to hide the bodies, yes. Uh, help me get them into the cell, that's it. You drag the guard, and I'll take... Huh. Hmm? Where'd they go? Oh, well, they appear to have vanished. That ever happened to you before? I can't say it has. Typically, I'm the one disappearing, not the one left behind. Though I'm told that corpses never move once they've settled. Bigger mortis and what have you. The hell was that? Perhaps someone looking for a raise. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Didn't you just say we're trying to avoid surprises? Yes, darling, but I've been ever so deprived of much-needed levity these past few days. I simply couldn't pass up the opportunity of a captive audience. The doctor was quite boring company, you know. <sighs> All right, then, sure. And if it makes any difference to you, I don't think there's much use in trying to piece together where those bodies went, as long as they don't get in the way of us getting to the weapon. Just because we've come up against something unexpected doesn't mean we should jump to conclusions. Would love to if there was a single conclusion to jump to. <gasps> uh, uh, whatever. All right. If it doesn't bother us, we don't bother it. We made our way down the halls. I hated being there again. We kept going deeper and deeper into the complex. Always another turn, another door, another staircase up or down. It felt like we weren't getting anywhere, but I knew we were. I knew that place front to back. Get a grip, V. The final chamber's behind those large doors just ahead. But something's wrong. Look, the cameras were on when I came in, and I'm pretty sure I saw other assistants walking around armed from where we came in, but now- I've lived through too many rough escapes to turn down a smooth one, Vespa. Let's just assume it will all go swimmingly until it doesn't, shall we? Right on cue. Quickly, behind me. We crammed ourselves to one side of the hall and waited holding our breaths. Down the hall, the door opened. It's one of the assistants. Hang on. He's... He's not firing at us. No. He was shooting into the room he just came out of, backing away from something. He dropped his blaster and ran himself across the hall towards the chamber we were headed to. The double doors opened. He fell into it, and the door slammed shut behind him. What do you suppose he was firing at? That many blasts with a gun that size, Ugh, I'm not sure it even matters anymore. And if it's still... Can we change the subject? 
Of course, darling. I'll take a point and eliminate the assistant while you barricade the door behind us. All right. Uh, done. Uh, you take care of that assistant yet, buddy? Uh, bud? I would love to, Vespa, but he isn't here. I turned to see what Buddy's looking at. An assistant's mask is lying on the floor, but there's nobody around to wear it. He should be around here somewhere, right? Room this big, he could be hiding anywhere. This room. Is there a draft in here? This entire facility is a draft, bud. There's no central heating on this thing. Are you just as creeped out as I am? Because if it's hypothermia, we- No, Vespa, I am not creeped out, nor is it hypothermia, as you may well know. There's something genuinely wrong with this room. I'm sure it's nothing. Up on that pedestal, it looks like the case with the egg of Purus in it. Let's just take it and leave, quickly. When I said the entire facility was a draft, I meant it. Every room in that facility was creepy and cold. The only real difference was just that all of the ancient Martian junk Miasma had been collecting all of these years was in that room. I mean, the gang was all there. The key, the mask, the throne, the teleporters, and a bunch of other ancient Martian odds and ends, all raised on a platform in one end of the room. Even higher behind them sat the weapon, the Egg of Purus. It was crowded as hell, stuff arranged with boxes and shelves and bizarre lab equipment. I didn't know what kind of experiments Miasma was up to in there, but they didn't look like the kind you really walked away from. The damned egg won't move. <sighs> it must be fastened to the box somehow. Can't you cut it off or something? I have knives, a plasma cutter. If you want to play with a plasma cutter around a bomb with this power, Vespa, be my guest. But I would ask that you give me one hour and 37 minutes to escape Mars first. How do you... Never mind, of course you do. But there's gotta be something to help us with this thing, right? It's not like she was gonna just let that thing blow up her base. She wasn't, actually. She was planning on destroying everything but. Yeah? How do you figure? You'd think with a telepath around, she'd try not thinking about it at all. Pretty considerate of her. Yes, though it does seem difficult to find a way to ward off information from a telepath, I'll give her that. I'll give you the short of it. There's a reason the weapon has been described as a purifier, and our dear Miasma is of the belief that her hypothesis is the most correct. It's reliant on a Martian atmosphere, and inside a dome of Hyperion size, she's willing to take her chances. And you just believe her? I didn't say that now, did I? No, like people as boring as Dr. Miasma, the specificity of semantics matters. The Egg of Purus is older than either of us. The inscriptions it came with. Here. This is where Miasma keeps her translations. There was a specific note here that she was hinging on for that hypothesis, but she was prudent enough not to think about it in my presence. With any luck, those will tell us how to disarm and detach it from the box as well. But with our luck, I wouldn't hold my breath. Got the cynic bug while you're down here, huh? So it is cynicism now, is it? But no, detective, I haven't. I believe she misunderstood some of these instructions. Now, if I could only find them... Great. So you're looking for an ancient Martian weapon instruction manual. You know, if she was organized, you'd find it faster. You'd think having more than one assistant would have helped. If you're done dwelling on ifs, Vespa, I would appreciate a hand. How about I go check on the barricade instead? I'll keep looking. Stay within my line of sight. There are carvings on the walls in that room, too. I try not to look too long at them. It's been hard getting Buddy's screams out of my nightmares the past couple of nights already. I didn't need another painful memory. Barricades intact. One of these boxes fell over. Must have been unbalanced. What's in it? Maybe the answer to all our problems. Ugh. A freezer seal? Take two daily with ten milligrams of water. Wait at least three hours after consumption before attempting reprint. Productive activities are these? Oh, I can't believe this fuck- the door, Vespa. Is there anything you can do to secure it? I could shove an even bigger box in front of it. Hey, uh, 
This thing says there are two doors to the room, bud. There couldn't be. I'll just lock both? That sounds as good of an idea as any. Why the lock? So, this must be where she was going to hide. After setting off the bomb? Yeah, that box is full of nutrient capsules. Long-term bomb shelter food kind of stuff they used to hand out during the war. Seal the airlock, set off the bomb, and live alone in here on nutrient soup while everyone rots on the surface. Smart, but what's the point if she ends up dying alone anyway? Bud? Buddy? Hmm? Oh, sorry, darling. Well, I might have some good news and bad news. There better be news before I get bored enough to stab that thing myself. Oh, hush. I found the text I needed to show you. Yeah? What's it say? These are the instructions for activating the weapon. Press our hand upon our purest egg. Watch the numbers as they fall, and then our planet will be clean again. And what? I thought that was rather a lot already. No, it's not. It just told us there's a timer and how to activate it. Yeah, but we're looking to deactivate it, remember? And you already touched it on that train and earlier when you were trying to get it off the box, so it's gotta be wrong. But it doesn't say a hand. It says our hand. That's a very significant linguistic difference. Yeah, but that thing says our everything. There's no way they could have gotten tech that advanced that their stuff would have biolocks. That damn thing was probably built around the time the first apes stood up. This predates apes about 10 million years, Vespa. And need I remind you of their perfectly functioning teleporter and mind-reading pill? Nerd. Weren't you just rambling about biolocks? Yeah, and? Well, this is what I was trying to show you, darling. Follow me on this hypothetical. Say that these translations are accurate. Only an ancient Martian would be able to activate the egg. Right, and they all went extinct before we even colonized this joint, so it's useless. Let's pack it up and get you to the nearest hospital, then. I still haven't gotten to my point. If she couldn't activate the egg in the first place, why make me collect it? And why hole up in here, airlock and all, if it would never go off in the first place? So, she has a way of activating it. We're back on square one. How do we deactivate it? That's our bad news. None of these papers have that answer. It is either with her or nowhere at all. Lost to time. <sighs> Nothing comes free or easy. So what do we do if it turns out you can't? If she ever found a way to activate it? No. That can't be right. There must be a way to... You can't just build a weapon that goes off if you graze it and forget to add a failsafe. It isn't practical. Buddy averted her eyes and went back to sorting through the files, but... I knew we were thinking the same thing. Unless there was no reason to have an off switch at all. <sighs> Who was I kidding? I couldn't have known. I didn't even know why she was so determined to find a way out of this on her own. She never told me. And I never asked. Ellie, I'll go take care of... The weapon. Vespa! That's... It can't be. Miasma. No. It couldn't be her. I shot her, watched her drop to the floor with a hole through her skull, smoking and sizzling, emitting a smell that'll be on my fingers for the next few days. But it was, because Buddy saw her too, as alive as we'd seen her the day she'd arrived to capture us, standing on that pedestal, her hand closing around the egg of Pyrrhus. Well... Second time's the charm, it seems. Not the time to gloat, bud. The pedestal's still rising. Check on the bomb. I'll make sure that thing stops permanently. But he didn't protest, which was more than I could ask for. I made my way to the overturned boxes by the console. Call me paranoid if you like, but there wasn't a single sign of miasma there when I looked. But the day we were having, anything stupid was possible. Thinking about it now, maybe I jinxed it. Damn it. Vespa, we may have our worst news yet. What? Did she activate the damn thing somehow? All she did was touch it. Well... No fucking way. Sorry, darling, but as impossible as it sounds, it's the only explanation for why this damnable thing has glowing symbols on its side all of a sudden. Uh, this day just keeps getting better. How much time we got? I don't quite know, but we might not have very long. Go look around for her, then. If the first kill shot didn't get her, this one wouldn't have either. We need to get answers out of her somehow. Of course. 
The platform has stopped. You better not bite me in the ass somehow. From where I stood by the airlock doors, I could see everything in the room. Buddy searching for miasma, where the platform was heading. A circular airlock in the ceiling that probably went all the way up to the surface. But there was one thing I couldn't see. Darling, I I'm afraid I can't. Until it hit me. <coughs> it was like a kick to the throat. When I looked up through my tears, it was just little old miasma. Not a singe or hair out of place. Not even a hole through her head. Twice shot through. I was about to yell for Buddy when she lunged at me. <laughs> no, you don't! <laughs> I realized belatedly that I didn't get kicked in the throat. Miasma just punched me. Because air in my lungs or not, it was too hard to wrestle her off me. She couldn't have been human anymore, not with that face, if you could even call it that. The skin of it, membrane thin, moved like there was something under it as we struggled, and the fear and adrenaline that rushed cold through my veins was finally enough for me to flip her over. Vespa! Vespa, are you? Then she grabbed me by my neck and squeezed. The tightening was so imperceptible I could almost miss it if it weren't for the fact that I was slowly losing air again. I cupped around blindly for one of my knives while Miasma was distracted. I punched her as hard as I could with my other hand, too, but it wasn't doing much. But Ringo, just in time to watch me kill your <coughs> Vespa Ilke. Let her go. Or what? You'll kill me again? I finally found one of my knives by the side of my boot, stabbed blind. Whatever I could reach, so long as it loosened her grip. I could barely hear her screams and her buddy's shots missing me from where she stood ten feet away. She was still standing. I stabbed her lung and two kill shots to the head and she just stood there while I tried to catch my breath. But there was no time. I got pulled to my feet and was forced to start running. We ran for cover behind one of the boxes. Like I said, that big a room you could hide anywhere, though I wasn't sure hiding was going to make any difference. I looked at Buddy, tight-lipped and looking down at her blaster. A million thoughts must have been running through that head of hers, contingencies firing through all cylinders. And she didn't tell me a single thing. But that wasn't the first time we got into a situation like that, so I didn't need her to. <coughs> Remember Valencia? I don't think this is the time to start dredging up emotional memories for the scrapbook, darling. Cute, but no. We need to keep her preoccupied so we can get out of here. She attacked me because she couldn't reactivate that platform. It goes all the way up to the surface and it's the only way she's setting that bomb off from here. So, if we seal her in with the bomb and run, we might be able to get out of this alive. Might I remind you why splitting up is a very bad idea. If she manages to get one of us, she's getting both of us. If you could just let me think. <laughs> okay, so now splitting up is a bad idea. Listen to me. We can't just hide here until that thing blows up. If she gets up and runs away, she'll lock us in. So it's either that or we lock her in. Only one of those options ends up with no one activating that stupid egg. So are, are you with me on this or not? Thanks for reopening on short notice, Sam. I know it's late. It's no problem, though I was surprised you even recognized me. It's been, what, a few years since uni? We barely even talked. I hate this song. Mind if I... Oh, sorry. Here, I'll do it. Thanks. could barely hear myself think. You probably need some rest. You look like you've been through hell and back, if you don't mind me saying. Are you sure I can't get you a cold compress? The the doctors won't get to look at you until they finish with your spouse. Oh, would you? She's not my... We're not... Oh, sorry. No, right. You're ranging. No rings. I just assumed since you both walked in wearing... I'm sorry. Say, how did you get here? I, I didn't see a car pull out when you came in. We hitched a ride in. You did? That sounds... I knew the gal. She owed me. Uh, well, I'm just glad you guys got here before it got worse. 
Your, uh... Client. She's my client, and that's already enough of a breach of contract. So if you don't mind, just drop it, all right? Right, right. Sorry again. Anyway, I was just about to say, I, I don't know what you and your buddy went through or for how long, but I'm glad you got her to safety when you did. I... Yeah. Me too. Uh... Is it... It's bad if I ask how, because those injuries look fresh, but there were some on her that looked like they were there for weeks already. I didn't think it was alright to ask, and if it isn't, you don't have to answer. I, I just wanted to know where or how you two got out looking like- A few of them are a few weeks old. She... Uh, I got help for us, or at least I think. Ah, <sighs> fuck. She was in there for a week longer than I was, and I don't even know if she meant to. Well, but hey, you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. We can just sit here and wait for the doctors to finish up. They've been in there for a few minutes now. Here, I'll go get you that cold compress anyway. Help yourself with some water in the back room. I'll be back in a few minutes. <sighs> Damn. Fifteen shots. <clears throat> You're going to have to try harder than that, buddy Rinko. Like it was going to split in two. Ah. I told you, I always get what I want. Now, come out before I kill your dear detective. <laughs> she didn't see me. She couldn't have seen me when I snuck up on her. She was turned around and looking elsewhere, likely where Buddy was. But, but she... I can hear you just fine, Detective Ilkay. The thing with muscle memory is that you don't really have to think. I've been through enough sessions with Sekuliak to know how to fight back when I'm out of balance on reflex. <laughs> what the fuck was that, bud? Oh, what? I, I heard you. Were you hurt? N never mind me. Are you all right? Would you quit that? Both of us are at risk here. If you lag behind, there's no getting out of this. What are you even trying to get from her? We can't disarm that thing. It, it wasn't about that. So it wasn't. Christ. I've noticed that the more parts she has to regenerate, the longer it takes her to get moving. Yeah, I noticed. So you notice she also... Keeps trying to get to you? Yeah. Bit hard not to when she's using me as bait. Ugh. I'll have to sanitize these for a week when I get home. Priorities, darling. You try to get good medical-grade disinfectant deals in Hyperion. See how you like it. They keep pricing this stuff like it's liquid gold. Ugh, I need a drink. Now who needs to get her priorities straight? Tuh! <gasps> look alive. You. Yeah, yeah, I missed you too, ugly. I suggest we move faster before she grabs you again. How are you so sure she won't grab you this time? <gasps> she was relentless. I was trying to keep my head clear, narrow my focus down on keeping me and Buddy safe. Miasma didn't have much of a face yet. It always formed last, but that didn't mean she couldn't move her here. I didn't know how she knew where Buddy was, but it probably had something to do with the growth. Buddy's back was turned, and I could almost see it. One of Miasma's floppy, wet eel arms will wrap it round her wrist, an ankle, or worse, her neck, and that'd be it. So I shot out and... Ah, fuck! This... And no, focus on the damn console, I'm fine. Now, while she's regenerating you... I, I don't know what came over me. I knew Buddy would follow me out. She had to, because that's what we planned. That was what we planned wasn't it? Even so, I took a second to look. It was a split second, but I got a good look at her. And it should have lasted lifetimes, because there were... There were tears in her eyes. And it was that same look outside the train, like this was the end of the line, and she wanted so badly to stay behind. Then she turned back around, and I was already too late. No! You idiot! But, but, buddy! Darling, buddy, what, what are, are you doing? doing? Just 
checking out all this stuff we paid for, making sure we're not getting scammed for our creds. Check out the mini bar, it's all stocked up. Look, there's no use just beating around the bush, but I'm I'm sorry they couldn't save your eye. Oh, that's quite all right, darling. No use dwelling on things you can't fix with a few hours of backroom surgery. On the bright side, I'd look rather dashing with an eye patch, I think. Would quite compliment a big jaunty hat with a feather on it, wouldn't you agree? They say pirate chic is very in for criminals these days. Besides, with the authorities looking for a two-eyed bombshell like me, they'll be remiss in looking for the more accurate one-eyed bombshell sitting before you. But... Then again, it will be a tad harder to avoid my mother, but that's a little challenge to spice things up. Let's just hope I don't run into anyone aiming to kill me any time soon. I can only imagine my aim is half as good as it used to be, seeing as... <laughs> I almost walked into several walls coming into our room alone. Hey. You don't... you don't have to do that with me. What? Mock my own disabilities? I should like to believe I'd at least be able to. Pretend like everything's fine. Uh, buddy, I won't hold it against you if you don't try to lighten up the mood every five seconds. Do my ears deceive me, or do I hear a hint of condescension in your tone? You can save that for some other time. I don't need or want it. Uh, I'm kinda trying to do the opposite here, bud. It's not like I want you to feel miserable about it for misery's sake. I'm just saying, if you are, then act like it. You were in there for weeks, one week of which I had to leave you alone. Oh, is that what this is, then? Your blessing so I can throw my own pity party? Or is it you want me to punish you for saving yourself? I... Because if that is what this is, then I can tell you now that it's going to get you nowhere. If there's anything that makes me more miserable, it's shoehorning blame on people who want it but don't deserve it. We made a mutual agreement to ensure your escape. It was a necessary risk and, furthermore, a done deal, darling. We both made it out alive, with most of our bits and bobs still in place and functioning. I was supposed to be making you feel better. <laughs> I can think of a couple things that could remedy that, if you're still offering. I... Uh, hey, uh... <laughs> Before we dispel this tension for a better one, darling, uh, there is one thing. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll try to forget what you just said. I still can't say I understand why you insisted we come to a hotel in Hyperion City when Olympus Mons was so much closer. I guess I wanted to see the place one last time. For good luck, that kind of thing. I see. I suppose I don't have the penchant for nostalgia that you do, nor for superstition. <laughs> Doesn't mean either do me any good. I've been here since, well, since I was a kid. And sure, maybe sometimes I miss Ranga, but that's not really something I get to have anymore. This is all I have left to remember my childhood by, no matter how shitty it is. Ever thought of doing a drive-by where you grew up? I'm afraid I haven't. You're right, you're... Yeah, that was a bit insensitive, wasn't it? Not at all. Vespa, darling. Yeah? Are you certain that you want to leave Mars? Yeah. Yeah, of course I am. As delightful as it is to hear that, it would be unrealistic and unfair of me if I expected you to just uproot and leave. You were quite adamant about it before. And I understand that you have a home here, family and friends who'd miss you. What I said back in that tomb was, well, if the shoe fits, then you could call it a wistful woman's dying wish. But you planned it all out already. This is the way it has to be, Vespa. No, it isn't, you fucking... If I'm headed out there with you, there'd be nobody to seal miasma in here. That's how airlocks work, dear, if you don't mind my condescension. Then, then why didn't you say anything? We could have worked something out. And add you onto the bill? By your words, darling, we're both at risk here. If anyone should be raising her voice, it should be me. But why does it have to be you? You don't get to make that decision, bud. Why shouldn't I? I've done plenty of good and bad in my life, Vespa, and it's safe to say this seems like a satisfying end to it. Just think of me as the price tag, darling. The cost of a fresh shot at the galaxy ahead of you. 
Open the goddamn door, Orinko. No deal, I'm afraid. I can't read the numbers on the bomb, but I can see that they just dropped a digit. You're right next door to the end. Just sit back and relax. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. <laughs> it seems we have a moment while her face is rebuilding itself. Uh, mind if I let you in on a little secret, Vespa? <laughs> you're an idiot, buddy. You're funny. You're a fucking idiot. You know that. <laughs> Trusting you might have been one of the best decisions I've ever made. <laughs> Ah, that. I didn't know just how much I wanted to say that until I did. And it's true. Vespa Ilke, you make me feel like all I've done has been worth it since the start. Like perhaps I am doing something good and that I do it well. Or I was. You are, but you better fucking stay alive so that you can keep doing it. Because, because, buddy, I love you. I know, darling. Ever since that night you tried to turn me in, I've thought of us. The adventures I told you about, bouncing from star to star, leaving this place and seeing what the galaxy has to offer. I wish we'd have gotten the chance to do that, my love. If I had one regret, it's that you never got to come with me. Buddy. Knowing you, it's been a dream I... I never wanted to wake from. Open the door. Open the fucking door, bud. Buddy! Keep a clear head and don't get emotional. Those were the first things I learned to do when I got into this business. Obviously, that wasn't my finest moment, but the wind some, you lose some. I wiped my face and sprinted for it. My thoughts switched gears from Buddy to the assistant that disappeared, and, more importantly, the blaster he dropped. I grabbed it off the floor in front of the door and ignored the aching at my joints, the sittering pain in my shoulder, the rattling of my breaths as I ran back as fast as I could. I sincerely fucking hoped those airlock door panels weren't as reinforced as the rest of it. There was no way in hell, in Mars, in Ranga, in the entire fucking galaxy, I was going to let Buddy Orenko's last words to me be ones of regret. Come on, come on, stop shaking and aim, V. Buddy? Buddy, you fucking idiot, answer me. Answer me, please. Buddy, buddy. No, no, no. <sighs> buddy, you're alive. <laughs> the one time you don't talk and it's... Oh, buddy, you're... The egg. It looks just like it did before. It went off, but... Those ancient Martians had a sick sense of humor. And where's Miasma? The weapon went off! Miasma's dead! The purest egg! Miasma! Alright, uh, no, quit that. Don't touch your... Uh, don't touch your face. Quit what? Oh, Vespa. I'm alive. <laughs> Does it hurt? I know. I, I know it hurts. Just try not to touch your face and stand up slowly. Can you walk? Oh, uh, 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 it, yes, but um, what, what do you mean about my face? Uh, why? You wanted me to come with you, right? Well, darling, I did. But I'm afraid we're putting different stresses on different words. The things you choose to do, Vespa... Your selflessness is what makes you so... I admit, to be someone you chose selfishly for once is quite a lovely thought. So no, 
I'm not in the business of wanting to take you away, Vespa. I want you to choose to go with me. Rather similar concepts, but hardly any connective tissue in between. But, of course, should you not want any of that, you are free of any and all obligations to stay with me. I release you, O oh spirit. <laughs> so, I want that too. And I am so happy to hear you say it, Vespa. Are there any last preparations you need to arrange before we go? I'll have to call Sakuli. I tell him to close up the office. Have him tell my dad for me. I, I don't think I can do that myself. I understand. Well, that can wait for one night, can't it? Yeah. Yeah, it can. We spent the night together. It was... nice. It was like nothing else. Just like Buddy Aringo. You know, Vespa, I don't know if this makes much sense, but I think... <sighs> maybe loving you is the sort of dream one just never wakes up from. I... Well, I guess we should go back to sleep then, but... <laughs> she doesn't look it, but Buddy falls asleep in minutes. <laughs> Crazy, but... I believe she could... do anything. I sit there, taking everything in. Everything that's happened, everything we've done. Taking her in. She's let go. Probably for the first time since I met her. I... I love the way she looks when she's like this, bare-faced and finally just... resting. She deserves more moments like this. I want to see every second of them. Every single one. Mm. Vespa. My whole life's been a series of cracked up choices, and your constant stumble from a punch that never stopped swinging. I thought maybe if I never stopped moving, no one would see through the cracks below every stumble. Med school, the forest, private investigating. A night to be just us. But there's a kernel of truth to the saying, you are where you're from. Rangy and pawn muck making it big and solar Hyperion. Choosing others, choosing what's right instead of what she wants. <laughs> That's my skyline. My twinkling lights, neon waves, and satellites. And the mess under that facade? See, the difference between skylines and people is that people aren't built to keep their messes in. You don't have to look at me for too long to realize that being selfless is just giving than pretending not to want a way to cash in. So, keep dreaming, bud. Keep hoarding your notes and your plans and your bombs and your heists. You saved this city tonight and I know you will save the next. Jet, can you come get me, please? But whatever dream of me you had, I hope it's one you can smile about, one you forget when you roll out of bed and face reality in the morning. Just think of meeting me as the price tag, the cost of a fresh shot at the galaxy ahead of you. Because my name is Vespa Ilke, and in this city, cleaning up messes is supposed to be my business. Most of the time, though, I just spread the mess around. But it's not like I got anywhere else to go. 
If you enjoyed this tale, please consider supporting the cast and crew, listening to the original episode by the Penumbra Podcast, or subscribing to us on YouTube. There you can find us at the Reverse AU channel, with all of our previous episodes, as well as a few behind-the-scenes specials. We would like to give special thanks to all our friends and supporters. Enough! Vespa Invented Romance Happy Hippo Hugger Mango Citrus That Evil Villain Lady Trisha And The Unnatural Disaster Their incredibly generous compliments and comments motivate us to keep creating these scripts and episodes. Thank you. You can also support Reverse AU by telling your friends about us, telling your friends to tell their friends about us, and especially by leaving a comment on the video or the script provided in the description below. Every comment and kind word spreads our stories farther and inspires us to keep adapting and improving on the rest of the tales to come. This tale, Vespa Ilke in the Final Resting Place, was told by the following people. Jeanette as Vespa Ilke, Buddy Arinko and additional voices, SJ as Miasma and Sam. On staff at the AU, SJ as writer and sound designer, Jeanette as writer and recording engineer, Lily as script editor, original music by Ryan Vibert, additional music by Buttons. Reverse AU is created and produced by Jeanette and SJ. All characters and concepts used in creating the Reverse AU belong to the Penumbra podcast by Sophie Takagi Kaner and Kevin Vibert. We're so sorry you've been called away, Traveler. Perhaps you'll meet us again at the Lighthouse. <laughs>